Okay, so in this tutorial, we're going to go over airport symbology. One of the first things that you'll notice is that there's two colors for any airport symbol. There's the blue and there's the magenta. All that means is that blue is for a controlled airport, magenta is for an uncontrolled airport. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that a controlled airport will have hours of operation, and it may well be that the airport will close, and in which case it will revert to an uncontrolled airport. So it's very important to know where you're going to go to look up the information. And you can find you have hours of operation on the flap of the reverse side down on the column that has all the information for controlled airports. So now let's look at some of the symbols. Here we can first see we've got open circles, which means that the runway is going to be either grass or gravel or dirt, but it's basically not paved. And across from that, we can see the anchor, which, you know, common sense represents a seaplane base. After that, now we're starting to get into the paved runways. So the first one we have is between 1,500 and 8,069 feet. And that's given by the runway in the closed circle. And keep in mind that the orientations of these runways will be specific to the airport. So the symbol's not going to always look like this. The orientation will change. Here we can see that this runway is almost at a 45 degree angle. This runway, which is also uncontrolled, is almost 180 degrees flat. So the orientation will change to match the actual conditions. Moving down to the next thing, we can see that we've got the airport runways which with a thick, bold outline border, and that's for any runway greater than 8,069 feet or multiple runways. Moving down one more, we see that we've got now this open circle, and that just represents navigational equipment and where it is in relation to the airport. So these could be VOR DMEs, Vortex, or VORs. Now, here we've got a little note which says all recognizable hard surface runways, including those closed, are shown for visual identification. Airports may be public or private. So let's see what a private airport looks like. It's going to get given by an R, R for restricted, with a closed circle. And we can use these if we have an emergency. But if we want to take off and land normally, we have to get permission from whoever owns or is running the airport. And we can see an example of a private airport over here and one over here. Next, we have military fields that have unprepared runways. So again, grass, dirt, gravel. But we will note that unlike the civilian Run, unprepared runway. The military unprepared runway has two concentric circles to it. Next we've got a heliport with an H, very common sense. Unverified with a U, very common sense. Abandon has an X through it, just like abandoned runways have X's through the runway numbers, and these are 3,000 feet or greater, just because for visual purposes you'll see this and notice it, very common sense ultralight flight park with an F. We can see one over here. Again, common sense. And then finally we've got tick marks which represent fuel and services. And these are normally for the working hours between Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. But you always want to consult the airport facility directory to make sure that they have the fuel that you need for your airplane because they're going to have basic fuel, but if maybe you have an airplane where you've converted the engine and it can run on regular gasoline, maybe you want to make sure that they have that. Or maybe you're flying a jet and they only have 100 low lead for piston airplanes. That's another thing you want to make sure that they have. They might have repair facilities. The list goes on and on. So general practice, look up the airport facility directory, go online, see what they got. And last but not least, there's a rotating beacon, which is given by a star, you know, like beams of light coming out of a star, with an open circle. Now, here we can see an example of one on this uncontrolled airport. My word of warning to you, sometimes airport lighting won't turn on 
unless you key it in on the microphone. So if it's going to be on all the time, it'll be on. If it's not, when you key in the microphone, it'll be on. So it's it's you have nothing to lose by keying in the microphone and it will help you identify and get to the airport sooner if you key in the microphone when you're further out and this should alleviate some of your problems as you're trying to navigate in an area that's kind of uh, sparsely populated or if you're trying to find an airport where there's a lot of city lights and you really need that beacon to distinguish it from the rest of the town so this concludes airports and next we'll go to airport data